Hi, my name is Stan. I am in Vancouver at the Vancouver International Airport. I'm on my way up to uh, Prince Rupert. And I got a little bit of time here. I got maybe four or five hours for my flight. I got my bag, as you can tell from the last video. And I'm just ready to roll. I'm heading up, uh, working with Tricorp. Had a youth conference. I am so, so excited. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time over the next four or five hours, take you on a little bit of the tour of the airport without really knowing what the airport's all about. Just looking for really cool spots. Uh, some of you who know me know that I travel lots. I travel all over the country. I travel all the time. And I have ways of being able to survive and take a little bit of the headache out of traveling. I would say one thing that's really important about traveling is just know that when you're traveling and, and seeing these people, these travel agents, they're people too and they want to be treated with respect. I know sometimes planes are late, there are delays, you lose your bag like I mentioned, and that's big time stuff. But at the end of the day, people want to be treated with respect. So what I would say, something being very important, is be the cool guy, be the cool girl, be the one who doesn't lose their cool. One time I was in Toronto, and I was in line, I was a second in line, and there was this flight to Ottawa. Things were really delayed. It was the last flight out for the day. This guy was up there just giving them heck, really, really treating them with disrespect. And they said flat out, no. I went up there and I kept my cool, I kept my golden smile, uh-huh. And I said, I know you already said no to the guy, but I just have to ask, is there any more room on this plane because I really need to get to Ottawa? And they said, you know what, sir? We were gonna hold off that, uh, that ticket for somebody else. Um, but we're gonna give it to you. Um, and I'd like to think that when you treat people with respect, people will go the extra mile to accommodate your requests. Go for it, treat people good. On my way up to Prince Rupert, I'm hitting up Hawk Air. Uh, and I always ask, this no matter where I go, especially these small little airlines, I always ask, what kind of plane am I traveling on? And there's nothing wrong with asking anybody what kind of plane it is and what kind of services are on that flight. Uh, brings me to my next point. Uh, let's go to the next location. I made a huge mistake one time. I was traveling from Thunder Bay to Sudbury on Bearskin Airlines and it involved a really small plane and a bottle of water. You see what happened is that right before my plane left, I guzzled and downed a bottle of water and they called my flight. And you know when you engage kind of the sensors in the midsection, the feels if you need to go and you do this. I felt a little sensation, nothing too major. And then while I was on board, it just kept building and building and building up brings me to my next point which I would say is really really big is right right back over there washrooms you need to be well aware of the washrooms and you need to ask what kind of plane am I on it's okay to ask that like I said before because you never know if it has washrooms so if it has a washroom grid your gold if it doesn't you're gonna to want to make sure you check one out otherwise you gotta pee in the back of a plane and be absolutely humiliated like I was back then it was just terrible but really really funny now that I think about it security can be a little bit of a difficult situation because they don't mess around right and their machines are sometimes even a little inconsistent some machines are really sensitive so you always have to remove your belt uh, some machines aren't so so sensitive so you really need to be aware and if they say take your belt off then just take your belt off they're really, really tight, I find, at times. But sometimes, there's the odd person that has a really good sense of humor. There was this young guy one time in Regina. I was walking through, and he was smiling, but yet running around. You can tell he was tired. And he asked me, I beeped, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, I beeped. And he said, sir, remove your belt. I said, no. He said, no, sir, remove your belt. I said, no. He said, sir, what's the deal? I said, if you want to get in my pants, you have to say please. And I started laughing and he started laughing and he said, come on, man. He says, my shift is done in 15 minutes. I just wanna go home. Will you please remove your belt? It was all good. But for the most part, keep it cool. Uh, but it's okay to have some fun and joke around for time to time, but keep your jokes clean because yes, jokes are funny, but you are at the airport. It's a different ball game. Nowadays, when you go away, go to a huge airport, you could buy anything. And there's so many options over at the airport nowadays. But you know what? These guys got it down because they know you're traveling with a lot of money. You save up your hard-earned money to go traveling. But do not waste it at the airport. When you buy stuff at the airport, just know how much you're paying. If you go downtown or you go to your neighborhood shop, you are paying maybe 15, 20, 25% more if you buy it at the airport. Uh, and if you're hungry, 
I guess you could eat at the airport, but if there's a whole bunch of you like a big family, eat at home before you go. Do not waste your money at the airport. Spend your money at your destination. I know, I know. I just talked about not spending money at the airport, but dude, come on. This is the West Coast, and the Asian food is so incredible, and I love dim sum. So, cheers. Oh, no. Oh, man. You know, traveling around the country is a serious blast. I get to meet people from coast to coast to coast. And the vastness of this country, whoa, it's, it's, it's pretty darn cool. But it comes with some serious demands. Uh, this week in Prince Rupert, I am dealing with a three-hour time zone difference. And what I mean by some demands, I'm talking about jet lag. One of, the, one of the best ways of dealing with jet lag, in my opinion, works for me and works for this body, is, is dealing with everything at local standard time. So when it's time to eat at local standard time, you eat. When it's time to sleep at local standard time, you sleep. Otherwise, you're going to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning or you're eating at 10 at night. That just doesn't work out good. So do everything at local standard time. For me, that works out. You know, one of the things we talk about in our communities is we talk about holistic healing. We talk about taking care of ourselves holistically. But let's face it. We don't take care of ourselves enough physically, and we need to do that on the road. I made a priority this week to pack my running shoes and all my workout gear, and I am making a commitment to get into the gym or at least go for a walk in the community every night. That's really important. You need to drink a lot of water. You need to eat good. You need to eat your greens. Hey, what am I trying to say? You need to take time to take care of you. Well, coming up to my gate, it's time to sign off. So, at this point, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and just know that there's somebody up there doing his or her best. Uh, keep that in mind. And you know what? Whatever happens, is out of your control. But I can pretty much promise you, it's gonna be just fine. Enjoy the ride, everybody. Safe traveling.